this week are facing another threat. Health workers are now dealing with a cholera outbreak that's killed a thousand people in the capital, Kinshasa. From where Catherine Soy now reports. It's hard to imagine just a week ago, homes stood here. This is a neighborhood on the outskirts of Kinshasa. When floodwaters came gushing down from a nearby river, many people didn't even have a chance to rescue their loved ones and belongings. Mansala Soleil shows me what remains of the two-bedroom house he shared with his wife and three children. He says he knows he should take his family to higher, safer ground, but they're still here, despite the obvious danger. I am afraid because it's still raining, but I don't have any money to move them. We got no help from anyone. Moving from here means renting a house. The rains are expected to continue for the next three months, and this means more trouble for a country that is facing a cholera outbreak, the worst in two decades. About a thousand people have died since last year. More than 50,000 from across the country have so far been affected. The government has declared cholera a national emergency and set up treatment centers. The government has set up this facility here in Kaluka, the most affected area in the city. We're not allowed to go to the wards where the patients are because of the nature of the disease. Since November, at least 30 people, mostly children, have died in Kinshasa alone. Cholera is highly infectious, also easy to treat if detected early. But with a poor health system and financial problems, doctors are overwhelmed. A government international appeal for $8 million has not helped. Less than $2 million has been raised. Only few countries in Africa can deal with a situation like this by themselves. This is why the government launched an appeal for help in November and declared cholera a national disaster. So here, health workers focus on prevention, talking to anyone they can about the importance of good hygiene and visiting centers like this one early enough. They are preparing themselves for more difficult times ahead in this rainy season. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Kinshasa. Well, the World Health Organization has called cholera a disease of inequity. It affects almost 3 million people every year. Of those cases, nearly 100,000 are fatal. The bacteria spreads through water contaminated with human waste, which means most deaths occur in countries with inadequate sanitation. Over the past week, Zambia's army has enforced a curfew after the disease claimed at least 70 lives. Yemen is in the midst of one of the worst ever recorded outbreaks, with a 1 million cases and more than 2,000 deaths since April. And as we heard in Catherine's report, more than 1,000 people have died from cholera in Democratic Republic of Congo since July. But the WHO is fighting back, launching a new strategy to reduce deaths from the disease by 90%. Well, for more, we're joined by Jonathan Kennedy, who's a lecturer in global health at Queen Mary University of London. Thanks very much for coming into Al Jazeera. A, a very basic question, does cholera just kill poor people? Not just, but I think with, with cholera, we have to remember that it is very easy to prevent and very easy to treat. And so if you have a supply of clean drinking water, um, if you have toilets, then you don't catch, um, you don't contract uh, cholera. If you do contract cholera, it's actually very easy to treat um, with antibiotics and with oral rehydration therapy. You can be well within a few hours. So it only reoccurs where there's a failure of the national government and the international community to provide a good health system and decent sanitation and clean water. So yes, it tends to affect poor people in poor countries. So is it basically a, almost a man-made issue that we're talking about places like Yemen where the infrastructure is broken down, where medical supplies is broken down, where vaccines can't be provided? We are looking at something that we are creating that's killing people. Exactly. So it's just a superficial manifestation of a much deeper political malaise um, of a failure to provide clean, clean water, sanitation and health system, which is really quite easy to do. And as you say, it is treatable. So we, should we be looking to the big international organisations to be do, just concentrating more on making sure that they can get this medical help, vaccines, or they can assist in that way? Or is that, is that too basic? 
No, in an ideal world, that's what we would want, but it's very difficult for the WHO, for example. They're continuously troubled by, by funding. They have a lack of funding, and it's quite easy to raise money for diseases like Ebola that potentially threaten um, rich people in rich countries. But for diseases like cholera that affect poor people in poor countries, it's much harder to generate any kind of interest among governments in the global north. Um, and also, we see that this is a manifestation of a much bigger political and economic problem. Um, uh, it's the result of an inequitous economic system that allows some people to be very rich and some people very poor. And the WHO just don't have the capacity to deal with that kind of problem. It's beyond their remit. I mean, they have put this figure of wanting to eradicate 90% of it. Is that realistic? Can it be done? Well, you've just explained with, with the difficulties. I hope so. And because it's so easy to prevent and treat, then it's, it's possible. But it will have to um, be part of a, a total revolution in the way that global health actors see health problems in the global south, I'm afraid. And it's hard to see that that will happen in the next few years. Yeah, interesting you pick up on Ebola and how it was suddenly a worry to the Western nations and all that money came in. We seem to report on the situation in Yemen nearly every day and, and the figures rising and nobody does anything about it. How, how can the NGOs change that situation? Well, I mean, NGOs are operating within a much broader context. And if we look at Yemen, for example, it's... Uh, society affected, affected by a, a terrible conflict, um, a conflict that is, um, that is, involves the Saudi-led alliance and um, who are backed by the UK and the US governments. And it's very hard for global health actors to, to deal with that. They can't, they can't stop the conflict. They just have to deal with the symptoms of that conflict. Dreadful, really. Jonathan oh. Kennedy, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.